The Riley and Kimmy Show continues our nerd visit of MegaCon 2016. And now we're over in a, another writer's section. That's right, we're over right here with Amy Chu, uh, my nor for Poison Ivy and plenty of other things, right? <laughs> I'm, me? I, I'm not going to touch, I promise. The Joker told me not to touch. Did you see that? He said, don't touch. <laughs> Stick her if you like. Hi. Hi there. Amy, thank you for being on the Riley and Kimmy Show. First of all, how's MegaCon 2016 been for you? Oh, best best show ever. Seriously, I'm not lying. Yeah, best show. Very warm, fun, friend, friendly. Well, people are great, but honestly, I ran out of Poison Ivy's like Thursday. I mean, Get I know I brought a lot, you know, so it's just been wonderful. Excellent. Where's the next place you're going to be? Because when we upload this, MegaCon's oh, okay. going to be over. Uh, uh, next place I'm going to be, uh, you know, because it's all a blur. Uh, here I'll be uh, in Charlotte for Heroes Con, and then I'll also be at San Diego Comic Con, and then New York Comic Con. Woo! Busy times coming up in 20. Yeah, yeah, very busy. Now, because you're doing the cons, are you writing at all here? I mean, what I, I mean, think I have my laptop here for. Oh, uh, see, I was, I was wondering. And during the week when you're not doing a con and something like that, is there a set schedule? Amy writes. Do you? Are you one of the time? But uh, you know, I, I'm also a mother of two children, so I have to write when I can. So when they're at school, I write. When they're at soccer practice, I'm writing. I write. Yeah, I, oh, okay. I have to multitask. Okay. What age was it when you decided to be a writer? I know you have degrees and multiple degrees, and that would be giving away my age. I don't want to do your age, here, but okay. When, oh, no, when you decided to write, when you decided no, to. I actually didn't. Um, I started. It's interesting. I had. I was thinking about this because I could easily, just as easily, not be a writer. Um, it was not necessarily encouraged or discouraged in my family. It was just not something I really legitimately thought uh, I could write fiction. I just didn't think I could be good at it. Um, but in sixth grade, um, one of our assignments was to write a write and make a book. So we had to write and illustrate our own book, and we had to make the cover and do everything together, you know, and, um, and I won. I was first place. I had written this little fairy tale story and um, it was voted on by the parents. The parents voted on it and I won. And I didn't really think much of it because, you know, I'm just a nerd. I really just want to get a good grade. So if I'm going to have to do that assignment, I will do that assignment. And it didn't really occur to me that I could actually be a writer. Now I'm looking back and well, maybe I could have been writing all along. I don't know. But it was really 2011 when um, I was helping another friend of mine to become a writer. I, I started really enjoying the process of writing. And I, I still didn't think I could be a writer, honestly. I, um, yeah, this is the book I came out with. Uh -huh. It's uh, Saving Abby. And it, I was kind of at that point just doing it sort of for fun, but also to see if I could do it, but not to necessarily get published. But then it became like, well, other people can do it. I, I, I really want to do this. So, wow. yeah. And then from that, yeah. DC comes into the play? Well, what happened was, um, let me think, this is going back, 2000, yeah, 2000, because I started putting this book out, I put out a bunch of anthologies, because once you get the bug and you start doing stuff, um, and you want to get hired, you need to start doing as much as you can, and so uh, eventually, uh, yeah, actually, this is my first um, professional story. I got the opportunity to do a short story, um, and then, you know, now I have a pro credit, right? And uh, I just uh, started doing, getting more work, you know? I think people started liking, A, doing a short story is really hard in, in comics. So if you can do it halfway decently, you know, it, it, it kind of show your, shows your chops and you can get more work that way. And so we went from Vertigo to um, the Strange Sports Story story. And then I got, um, oh, yeah, here we go. Now we get into Sensation Comics Wonder Woman, and I think that's when I started getting, um, when I was asked to pitch for Poison Ivy. So well, that's kind of what happened. Now, do you write a, a little different per artist that you might be I dealing try. with? I do, because okay. um, it, it, it just helps me, and I think it makes for a better comic. But that's not, a, it's, it's a little bit of a luxury. You don't always know what um, artist you're going to have. So in self-publishing world, of course, you can control all these variables. But when you start working, you know, I'm not the editor. I do try to say who I would like to work with, mm -hmm. and if they're available, no harm done. It would be awesome to work with somebody. Uh, and I do try to write. It. So if I don't know, I'll try to find out as soon as possible who might be the artist on whatever I'm working on. Because I do, every artist has his or her strengths. So if I can play to those strengths, or maybe there's something they don't want to draw anymore, but they would really love to do something, I'll try to throw it in the script. It, it doesn't matter to me. 
are you a detailed script writer, one that does the, you don't do the movie script type? No, it depends, okay, that's what I'm saying, it also helps to know who you're working with. Um, I'm new, so I'm not going to tell somebody who's been in the business, who probably knows better than me, all this stuff. I mean, think it's, um, what I try to do, I will always give a lot of photo references, and I tell people you can you can choose to use them. This is just for your reference. I, I think they really do appreciate it because a lot of artists have to get their own photo references. That's my way of saying this is what I would prefer, um, but also make it more historically accurate. For example, so uh, I'll do that. And uh, but my my scripts are fairly loose. I do, I try to put in enough detail for them. If they want to do more world building, they can do that and not feel like, but I also don't want to be perceived as a lazy writer either, you know. So I put in enough where I think it works for the artists. If they want to go deeper, they can, but if they want to just go minimalist, they can also do that, so. But if, they, if it's a writer that, it, a writer, if it's an artist that is more recent in the industry, I might put in a little bit more detail, just, you know, in terms of you know, uh, helping them out also, because I don't know what, what, what they're gonna come up with. Do you? Once it's published, do you read it? Do you go back and look at it? Really? <laughs> Stay away from it. It's kind of, it's scary. You don't want to look, because you know all the mistakes, right? Oh, wow. I mean, I had to do that for Ivy because of six issues, so I went back to make sure it all, like, you know, but it, it really is like, oh, I don't, you know, yeah, it's, it's hard. It's probably your baby, too, your, that's in your hands in a way. I mean, it, it came here, and then it's... You know here. what? No, because a baby, baby grows up, and a baby's always with you. With these, you got, it's literally like once it's done. Um, to me, the process is very much like a um, crossword puzzle. When it's done, it's done. It's done. It's done because I solved it. Because it is very much of a sol how do you do the story that works with page turns, with this action, blah blah blah. It's a jigsaw puzzle or crossword. Pu it's a puzzle. And um, if it's done, and I'm psyched, it actually worked, and it's done. I don't have to look at it again. Nice. So. Going back real quick here, you mentioned you were a nerd as a kid. Did you, yeah. Were you reading comic books as a kid? No, you know what? I, th I, I had to think about this because I don't think so. And I asked my parents, like, why weren't we doing... And of course, their answer was, like, we didn't have any money. So they didn't okay. want to spend any money on comics. Um, I did read comics in college um, because everyone did. Um, but I never bought my own comics until much later. Um, but, yeah, it was, um, you know, A, it was, I was a nerd studying. I was on... I was on the chess team oh, and the right. math team, and I played D&D &D and, you know, video games, but, um, yeah. <laughs> Do you read now for pleasure? Can that happen in Amy Chu's world? Um, no, I, I shouldn't say it. I, I do. I would love to. I have a huge stack of stuff. Uh, there's a, uh, But a lot of it is really I read for work because... I want to get better as a writer, and I know some people, like, you know, I'm always looking for new ways of doing things, um, uh, how, to, how to make my uh, story structure, my arcs better, so I, I read kind of for work, um, but, but of course I derive great pleasure out of it if it's a wonderful, you know, book or show or, um, it doesn't have to be comics, but, you know, anything that grabs my attention. Being the writer, you're in America. Is that great American novel in you? That you don't want to go that that world. Comics. I, I really like writing comics. I it's I think prose to me is terrifying. I really really like comics. I'm not saying it will never happen, but to me it's a whole different ball game. Mm. Comics is about constraint. You know, 20 pages. Can I do it within 20? Prose. I don't know. There's a lot of words there. I'm a visual person. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know that I could write a novel, honestly. I'm being totally honest about that. It, it doesn't excite me. Okay. It just does not. I can see doing maybe a hybrid book, you know, maybe especially for teenagers or a choose your own adventure, but something that does not involve. And also, I'm, I really, really like collaborating. To me, prose is very solitary, and I'm just not someone to sit there and churn out something. What's important, what I love about comics is when I do the script and it goes to the artist and it comes back, it's like it's different. It's wonderful. It's their interpretation, and I riff off of that. When we go do another couple of rounds, and I change the dialogue and work with them on, yeah, it's it's wonderful. I, I enjoy that part. See, I'm a frustrated 
unfinished writer. You know, I, I got all these projects, you know, and, right, right. and you is, it's like, boy, I want to get out of here right now and start writing right. because the enthusiasm's there. Well, I, lo I love to, and also it's new for me. I'm not, I'm not jaded or anything, but it's, it's cool because once you do it and people like it, it's like a drug. You know, when people say, I actually liked your book and I'm like, well, you really liked it. That's kind of cool. You know, when I was in business, it's not like anyone ever said, we really love that PowerPoint you did, you know, <laughs> that like that market segmentation, that was pretty awesome. It doesn't happen, but you know, you write something like Ivy and people are like, oh my God, I was really moved by that. Like, oh my gosh, I can actually, you know, affect people, so. And, and bring happiness in a world sometimes that needs that, you know? Yeah, happiness or, uh, you know, in some cases, excitement or just, you know, um, hopefully a little bit thought provoking. That's what I like, Excellent. you know? I hope for those who are unaware of Amy, head to your local comic book store, get her material, ask for it if you don't find it, because I think they will be quite happy, especially checking out Poison Ivy and all the other rich material you have. Thank you, Amy. Nice to meet you. Thanks. Nice to meet all of you.